to lock you. The spirits of demons say, man. Um, it says, okay, so let me read verse 7 again. It says, For Yahweh Shemashah have not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Right, so Yahweh Shemashah has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. You know what I'm saying? So the Heavenly Father, um, He's called us, he, he, He's called us to be uh, chaste virgins, man. You know, He's called us to be sober, man. He, he hasn't called us. He's called us to be abstinent. Okay, we have to abstain from all levels of fornication because we are called unto complete chastity. You know what I'm saying? We're not called unto anything else. We wasn't called in this thing for any other uh, reason outside of uh, being abstinent and purified. You know, let's go here. Lord willing, I can finish the increase of without any more interruptions, man. This uh, Titus chapter 2 and verse 11, it says, For the grace of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, that bring of salvation have appeared to all men. Okay, so the grace of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, that, that bring of salvation have appeared unto all men. It says, Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly. So it says, Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, uh, righteously, and godly in this present world. You know, so that's what. Um, that's what the grace of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai teaches us. It, so if the, if, if the grace uh, of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, that bring of salvation, has truly appeared unto us, it has, it's supposed to teach us to deny ungodliness, you know what I'm saying, which ultimately goes into being abstinent and worldly lust, you know. And we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So we that's what the grace of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, that bring of salvation, affords unto us. It affords unto us abstinence, you know, so that's what... That, that's that's what that's what we gotta bring into the picture. Okay, has the grace that they bring of salvation, Yahabash uh, from Yahabash Masha truly appeared unto us, because it appears unto all men, but have we misused that uh misused that 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 um that chance at grace uh by being uh, uh unabstinent, by being unchaste, you know, by being impure, you know, by being unvirtuous, you know. It says Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great power, Yahweh in our Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. And that's what it's all about. You know, Yahweh Shah Mashiach gave himself for us. He was completely abstinent and denied this world. He lived soberly. You know, uh, he denied ungodliness and lived godly in this pres in this present world. Which means he was completely abstinent, so that we could have that spirit of abstinence completely uh, from 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 this world and the lust thereof, so we we can be redeemed from iniquity and be purified and be cleaned and made those uh, chaste virgins that uh, you know that are zealous of good works, you know, because th th those who are, are zealous of good works are ultimately those chaste virgins, you know. Let's go here, you know, and Salakia, and um, it's uh, to be abstinent. To be abstinence is abstinence a purification process, which makes us susceptible virgins. Virgins, it's like our purification process after being reborn of spirit. You know what I'm saying? So uh, ultimately denying ungodliness, worldly lust, living soberly and righteously and godly in this present world is ultimately a purification process, so we can be redeemed from all iniquity and be uh, accepted as those chaste virgins, like we just you know kind of went into. You know, uh, let's go and then just echoing what I just said. Uh, let's go here to 1 Corinthians 7 and 1. This uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, it says, Now concerning things whereof they wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. So why was Apostle Paul saying this? Was he saying this on some sodomite stuff? Of course not. Was he saying this because it's unlawful for you to touch a woman? Of course not. Was he saying this because you had to be a literal virgin? No. Okay. Why Why? Why was Apostle Paul telling us that it's good that we not touch a woman? Apostle Paul was conveying, conveying unto us the power behind abstinency and virginity. Figuratively and metaphorically, this is the most highest, the most high level uh, of, of, of being abstinent is being able to abstain from women. You can abstain from anything. That's why Apostle Paul was conveying this unto us, because as servants of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, uh, we are uh, expected to be abstinent. We are expected to be purified. We are expected to be virtuous and holy and uh, sober. You know, so uh, a key way for us to be accepted in this type of manner is for us to uh, ultimately, uh, it's for us ultimately to um, just completely not touch a woman at all, you know, because that's going to fully teach us full-on abstinence, 
Okay, that's what's gonna teach us full on abstinence. You know, that's 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 gonna teach us how to abstain and deny ourselves. Because you know, Jake, you know, the Israelite man, you know, we love box. We love <laughs> we love sticking our rod in box, man. Okay, we love women. Okay, but if we can abstain from doing that. If we can abstain ourselves from doing that, then we could be uh, abstinent within anything. You know what I'm saying? And that's why Apostle Paul said it's good that we don't that we don't even touch women. Why? Because it teaches us uh, the the the, the full on uh, power behind abstinence. It teaches us the full power uh, uh, behind uh, sobriety and holiness. You know, it teaches us that that, that full level of, of abstinence and self denial. You know, that's why Apostle Paul said this, you know, because we can completely engulf ourselves and indulge within uh uh being being clean for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Let's go here. One of my favorite precepts. This Romans eleven and four. It says, But what said the answer of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah unto him? I have reserved to myself even I it's like it. But what said the answer of Yahweh Hashem Hashem to him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. So Yahweh Hashem Hashem said he has reserved unto himself um, uh, seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Man, okay. So you have you have a, a complete number of men down here who are who are, who are going to be purified. You know how how are they going to be pure because they're not gonna bow down there. And they're not gonna get on their knees, man. They're not gonna. Uh, uh, they're not gonna uh, disgrace or compromise their integrity, you know, for any kind of uh, for for any kind of reasons, man. Okay, they're not gonna be getting down on their knees. You know what I'm saying, so to speak, man. Like they're saying, this word finna get on your knees and do the thing. No, they're not doing that. Okay, they're not finna get on their knees and, and defile themselves, man. You know, by having outer course like we was reading earlier, man. They're not gonna have outer course or inner course. They're not gonna uh have any kind of form of, of, of chambering. You know, they're not gonna have any kind of form of fornication involved with them, man. You know, they're not gonna bow their knees to the image of Baal, man. They're gonna maintain their purity and their chastity. And this is who we wanna be. We wanna be of those men who are not gonna bow the knee to the image of Baal for in, in no kind of shape fashion or form, you know, um, let's go here, back to 1 Corinthians 7, it's back in 1 Corinthians 7 and 34, it says, there is a difference also between a wife and a virgin, the unmarried woman cared for the, cared for the things of the Lord, you have a shemash, that she may be holy, both in body and in spirit, but she that is married cared for, cared for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. So it says there's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. You know, the unmarried woman would be likened unto the virgin. Of course, it would be the virgin because a virgin, we, we just went into is two different types of virgins, which one of the virgins is, is one who has not had sex, another one who is betrothed, uh, uh, betrothed or um, a young maiden who is just freshly you know, uh, being joined into a husband, you know, so it says the unmarried woman care for the things of the Lord, you have a that she may be holy, both in body and spirit. And this is why we are to be as virgins. So we can think about you have the Lord and pleasing him continuously. Like we just read in, uh, like we read in first Corinthians seven and one about how it's, it's best if we don't touch a woman. Why? So we can care for the things of the Lord. You have and be holy, both in body and in spirit, because we have to have our, our flesh and our spirits clean to be accepted. Like it says in second Corinthians seven and one, you know, so this is, uh, this is why it's so important for us to, uh, remain, maintain our virginity to ma maintain our virginity so we can stay focused on pleasing Yahweh Hashim Shine and being delighted within him. You know what I'm saying? We stay virgins by keeping ourselves chased, by being continuing to be abstinent. You know? Let's uh, go here to Deuteronomy 22 21. This Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 21. It says, Then they shall bring out the damsel. Okay, so like, let me see if I can start again. Okay, I'll just start here. This uh, Deuteronomy 22 and 20. But if this thing be true and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, which a damsel could be likened unto a, a virgin as well. You know, 
Now the fellas get the word damsel. Just to be sure. A young woman, mar- marriageable young woman, a maid. Yeah, maiden. Yeah, so this 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 another word for a virgin, a damsel. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, the young the young maiden, so she's her tokens of virginity. And what's her tokens of virginity? Got to be blood, you know. Well, let's see what the word tokens is. Like it. Okay, the tokens of virginity. What's what's the token of virginity? Obviously, popping that cherry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like they say in the world. Okay, the blood. Blood be not found when when when, when the husband take the young damsel. You know she ain't got no proof of, of of her virginity. It says then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the man of the city of her city shall stone her with stones that she die. Because she had wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house, so shall thou put evil away from among you. You see, so this is this is heavy, man. You know, this is heavy. Like as as a uh, because if, if if you don't have your tokens of virginity, then if if you don't have your uh, tokens of virginity within the law, if it, and, and, and a man lies with you. Expecting you to have those, because uh, of course we're, uh, a man is gonna lie with a new wife, a new maid, and a new damsel, because he's gonna expect her to have tokens of virginity. But she, if she don't have those tokens of virginity. She's gonna be stoned to death. She's gonna be put to death. You know, so we 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 gotta be found with the tokens of virginity. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> we gonna be put to death. You know, we gotta be found within uh, with, with the tokens of our virginity. You know, with our purity, within holiness, or yeah, or we're gonna be put to death. You know, that's why I brought that out. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's in the law for a young maiden, a, a virgin, to be found with those tokens. If not, uh, virginity, which comes from uh, us upholding our uh, abstinence and, and abstaining from uh, fleshly lust. Let's go here. This is Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 13. It says, and he shall take a wife in her virginity, speaking about the priest, speaking about the high priest and the priest. Of our nation, you know, which we're a nation of kings and priests, you know. But ultimately, we know who the ultimate high priest is, you know. But because uh, because ultimately, um, uh, major majority of us men of the Lord, we took wives not in their virginity, you know. We was we was Gentiles, and you know we didn't. And most of these women, they're not they're not virgins anyway. So just to go beyond oh beyond that point. We're going we're gonna to take it to the point of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashat, being the ultimate high priest, you know, and him, you know, only accepting a virgin. But let me just read this precept. This Leviticus 21 and 13, it says, And he shall take a wife in her virginity, speaking of, of the priest, a widow or a divorced, or a divorced woman, woman, woman or profane or an harlot, these shall he not take. But he shall take a version of his own people to wife. You know, so we're supposed to take a, a version of our own people to wife as priests in, in, in uh, according to the, the our customs and our law, our heritage, our traditions. You know, of course, we've been dis- discontinued to, from our heritage. But the point is why I brought this up. Yahweh Shai is the ultimate high priest and we can not be accepted by him without being virgins. You know what I'm saying? Because we know the Heavenly Father and his only begotten son, they they will not at all do iniquity, and they they they're not going to go against the law at all. They they still uphold the law, you know. So they're not going to um, take us if we're not virgins, man. And let me get this word virgin.
But you can only be a virgin if you're being being abstinent. <laughs> you ain't a virgin if you ain't been being abstinent. Well, okay. It got made in or let me look it up on Google. Let's see. See, so you got two different types of versions. You got one, a person who has never had sexual intercourse, maiden, unmarried girl, celibate, or being relating to or appropriate for a virgin, chaste, virginal, celibate, abstinent. Okay, so self denying, pure, uncorrupted, incorrupt, undefiled, innocent. So that and that's sinless. That oh ooh. So you a ver a, 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 a word that's synonymous with a virgin is someone who is sinless, someone who who has morality, a pure. You know, someone who's been untouched, unspoiled, untainted, flawless, spotless, which word we found without spot and blame, preserved. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so okay, so there we go right there. Undefiled, stainless, unmarked, man. Perfect. You know, this this is what is supposed to be accepted by uh, a high priest, by a priest. You know, so the number one high priest, our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashak, he's looking for the pure. He's looking for those who are untouched. He's looking for the chase. He's looking for virgins, you know, which we, he's looking for the abstinent, you know. Uh, I got a couple more. This uh, Sirach chapter 20 and verse 4. It says, as is the lust of an eunuch. A eunuch would be someone. Let's just get what a eunuch is. I don't like the words that it was giving me for you, Nick, so I give. So a unit, a unit is somewhere unsex. Let, let me see. Let me look up the definition for it. I'm just look at the etymology. I want to see some words that were synonymous with it, but that wasn't no good ones. A man who has been castrated, especially in the past, one employed to guard the woman's living areas at an oriental court. A castrated man, jeez. A eunuch is a castrated man, guard of the bedchamber. Jeez, I didn't know they was castrated. Oh yeah, or merely a palace official. Okay, so you ain't necessarily you you don't necessarily had to be castrated, but I'm sure in, in 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 the Greek in the time of the Greeks, these sickos was castrating men and making them eunuchs. You know what I'm saying? But uh. Um, you could be a eunuch too. That's just uh, someone who is entrusted uh, to to not have sex and be a guard of a bad chamber, bed chamber to make sure nobody don't run inside and defile the virgin. You know what I'm saying? So they could be they could they, they could be likened unto a eunuch. You know. So let's let's read this precept one more time. Um, I mean, let's read this precept. It's the Rock 24, also known as Ecclesiasticus 24. As is the lust of an eunuch to the flower, a virgin, so is he that executed judgment with violence. And I brought this out because 
uh, it's the less of a eunuch to the flower of uh, a virgin. Who's the ultimate eunuch? Who's the ultimate eunuch who's not partaking within uh, uh, sexual uh, intercourse or who's not partaking uh, in, in partaking within chambering? You know, that's the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Okay, they're not just partaking within intercourse with anybody. Okay, they're not just doing that. They're not out here whoremonging. They're abstinent. They're abstinent men. Okay, there's only certain type of uh, men that they'll go into. You know, there's only certain. Well, so like is, you could say women. There's only certain type of women that the heavenly Father and His only begotten Son will go into, and those are virgins. You know, because we just read in the law that they're supposed to only accept virgins. So the desire of an abstinent man is for abstinent women. So that's how we're supposed to be. You know, the 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 the, the lust of a eunuch. Who would be as someone who is abstinent is to have someone that's abstinent, which is a virgin. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be abstinent so that we could be accepted by the abstinent. You know. Let's go to Saint Corinthians. Saint Corinthians chapter eleven and verse two. It says, "For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin." To a Mashiach, you know what I'm saying? So we're supposed to be presented as chaste virgins to a Mashiach, Yahweh Shah. You know, and uh, how do we do that? How, how are we going to be presented as chaste virgins? By being abstinent, by abstaining from fleshly lust, man. By abstaining from the uh, from, from the world, refusing un old wise fables, man. You know what I'm saying? Denying ungodliness, re restraining ourselves in all things, being temperate in all things. This is how we're going to be presented as chaste virgins unto you. Yahweh Shah Mashat, and this is how we're going to be accepted by the Heavenly Father Yahweh as wives, you know, New Jerusalem. And here we go right here. This is the last one I got. This is Revelation chapter 14 and verse 4, 1 for 4. These are they which are not defiled with women, they are virgins. Speaking about those who are going to be redeemed from the earth, the remnant, those who are going to be preserved, you know, those those chaste virgins, the abstinent. These are they which follow the land whithersoever he goeth. You know, which means they're completely abstinent, just like our Lord was. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto Yahweh and to the Lamb. They, they these are those virgins, man. Okay, for they are virgins, man. You know, they're completely chaste, they're completely pure. You know, and these are going to be the first fruits unto Yahweh and unto the Lamb. You know why? Because they're only accepting the chaste, the abstinent, the virgins. You know, the purified. You know, within flesh and within spirit. You know, so this is why it's so important for us to abstain. Uh, from fleshly less and less of the world, you know, and deny ungodliness, you know. But uh, that's it, man. I pray through the spirit and pride of Yahweh Shemashah. This is the final one. Give all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah Bashem, Rakakwadash, the honor of the apostle and elders who rule well. And peace and salutations to the house of David. Shalom to the late.